Mi gente, what's good? My name is DJ Integrity. I am the host of Mix Mondays. And what you're about to see is a recap of a past interview that we have done on Twitch. Make sure that you're following us there, Oxen Brand Music. And then also like and subscribe for more content like this. Dale. Rolling, when technology is rolling, it's fantastic. When it's not, it's, uh, it's what it is, what it is, Facts. right? Facts. So. But for those of you guys who have never heard of DJ LC, um, LC, if you could tell us a little bit about yourself so we can get to know you, man. I'm I'm just a humble servant of Christ, for real, for real. But uh, I'm an artist. Um, I'm an engineer, a DJ. I mean, anything I can get my hands on involved in this community and CHH, I do. I see the homies in the chat. What up, Q? What up, Jay? Shout out to everybody in the chat, man. Just working. That's it, really. I'm a worker. <laughs> that's it. Constant grind, constant grind. Now, that's the thing. So, okay, so you, I... I've seen your name right on uh, your your handle be DJ LC. Mm -hmm. How long have you actually been a DJ? I think next year will be ten years. So ten. officially, yeah. So uh, do you do um, like do you do like uh, private events like weddings and stuff like that mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. do it all oh. touring uh, events, concerts, all kind of stuff, man. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. Yeah, I didn't know. So because obviously, so by the time I got a chance to, you know hear anything about you i was like man um this dude's got a dj in his name but like i don't see like him like mixing or anything mm. so like i just see producer and artist uh yeah. so uh so i've definitely that's how I, I i got to know you so what what came first uh djing or the, production well, or oh here we go this is the question this is see this is the question um technically the artistry came first i was like freestyling on the bus when i was like 11 so technically the artist okay. came first but like if i want to say officially like when i was like really doing stuff like putting stuff out djing man i've been doing that stuff since i was in middle school so dang middle school okay so then uh so what got you started into djing then man i'm gonna be real i just love the art of it like i found so many different things just about djing and um you know scratching and all kind of stuff and man i remember just sitting on the bus and i had the little edj app on my phone oh uh, yeah going, yeah yeah bro, i was going ham with that thing dog. i was going in and and later on uh, my parents blessed me one christmas and ended up getting me a house set up and it skyrocketed it from there invested everything i had into that business hey that's what's up yeah no and it's funny that you even say that because like as far as like starting to dj even on my end like um, mm -hmm. I had never ventured out to even think about DJing. Like it wasn't something that was even a thought, but it was like, oh, I got this on my phone, and oh, okay, there's a there's an app, you know, on the uh, on the on the iPad right. for that, right? And then it was like, you know, hey, why don't you go ahead and do this? So I started like DJing off the app, you know, for right. for a little bit. So I, I feel that, bro. I feel that connection. That's so, all it was. So, I was like the app. You gotta go stay with the apps. <laughs> hey, I, you know, honestly, that was the first thing. Like now the the apps are a little bit different, whatever. But like. That was the first thing. Anytime anybody was like, you know, hey, I'm interested. What, what should I do? I'm like, yo, first thing, just do the app. Just just get involved with that first because if that's not something hey, that you yo. already like or do, don't do not do not do nothing else. So, okay, so you get into DJing. I don't know. Uh, uh, so because you are a producer, the first thing that everybody always asks me, um, and I'm talking about like everybody, they're like, okay, you know, uh, you know, what beats you got? What beats you make? What beats like? I'm just like, whoa, whoa, whoa there's, there's a difference. I'm... I'm not a producer. I didn't say I was a beat maker. I didn't say I was a producer. I said I was a DJ. I said I manipulate records to sound the way that I want them to. I'm not creating those beats. But for you, you are a producer. When did that role start happening? Uh, probably like 16. I think like when I hit like 16, I really took the time and I was like, okay, I'm going to try something new. Um, one of my mentors had, had introduced me into a program called Reaper which was my first doll, like my first ever doll. And I started going ham, uh, finding samples and just putting together little stuff. And um, I think I dropped like a, a beat mixtape on SoundCloud when I was like 15, 16. And that's when I really like started producing, producing, I guess. But it wasn't like, I, I wasn't selling anything at the time. I was just making it for fun. Actually, if I'm being real, nah, 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 see, see, see. See, that's when I really got into it. If I'm being real, I had the old, uh, I was it, the MacBook G4, the old Notebook G4. Oh, dang, bro. Dog, listen, I had that when I was like nine. 
and I was making on GarageBand. I was making beats. You know, that's that's what that was. Yo, that's funny. And so I always tell everybody my you know my story of like knowing how to I guess create mixes or whatever is. Um, I had a Windows uh, Movie Maker is where where I would do it. So uh, I I didn't know that the stuff that I was doing then was gonna turn into what I'm doing now. And obviously my my brain was able to like pick up on that. But yeah, bro, like that's it. I was just using Windows Movie Maker and getting the edits and you know like and you know especially being a producer as as well as a DJ, filling up my computer with multiple doubles <laughs> of everything because I'm trying to you know create. I I'm trying to do a lot of different just tracks. Had to buy a brand new hard drive because I yeah, had doubles of everything. Bro, how did you? Uh, what, what's the what's the amount that you ended up buying? I have four six terabyte hard drives. Whew. It's it's bad. It's okay. So you have to understand. I've been DJing for a very long time. I know I'm young, but I've been doing this for a long. Time. I have stuff from the forties, fifties, all the way up to recent. So, yeah, that's all right. Pretty that means you just you stay strapped. That's what it is. You just stay including, strapped for in, in, including radio station stuff and all kind of stuff from prior stuff. So I was like, yeah, we're just gonna take a new hard drive in and out. That's how we do that, bro. And this is, uh, and I, I'm sure everybody in the chat, you you guys have had something where you like. You try to stay organized, right? You try to stay on top of it. Let's let's just take our phones, right? Let's be real with our phones. You be taking some pictures, and you're like, okay, I'm going to stay organized. I'm going to go ahead. Oh, you know, I'm getting full. I'm going to go ahead and delete some pictures. And then, like, I want to say a majority of us, I could be wrong, but a majority of us have, like, more memes <laughs> and screenshots on our phone hey, than things that actually matter more. <laughs> like, uh, But, hey, guys, uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'm going to go ahead and go into the number nine video with my man, Socrates. Stick around. We got a lot more in store for you here with DJ LC. Let's go. This one gon' be the last that I need, yeah I don't wanna waste no time Too many thoughts in my mind I don't let you love me Can't trust me I don't wanna leave you blind Yeah, that was, yeah, that was number nine Socrates with Sirius So, Elsie uh, something that we were we were already talking about uh, being a producer and everything else. The first thing I obviously always have to ask is um, who are your inspirations as a producer? Like who are some people that you look up to uh, in in that realm? Oh, uh, this is about to be a very bad response. Okay, um, <laughs> <laughs> I want to say uh, Timberland probably is the first person um, as far as production wise. Um, he just. I, I took a master class of actually as his recently in the past, like I think two years. Um, I think he just has a very creative way of making instrumentals. I don't even call them beats, but like he, he takes his voice and manipulates it. I mean, he'll take a, he'll, he'll take a pair of, you know, maracas and, and record them in live sound and, and manipulate it. Um, I think he's probably one of the most strategic and creative um, producers in this era, to be honest. I mean, that's does somebody I, I just can't imagine like the industry not having. So is that something? So with his, I mean, because obviously, yeah, Timberland's a beast, right? There's there's mm. so much uh, that he changed um, in in that world. And again, not even being a producer, there's at least enough understanding as a dancer that I was like, yeah, sonically, I especially in that era. I'm like, whoa, there's a lot that has changed, and it all really sounds like it's stemming from him, right? So um, is that something in your production that you do? Do you like to do a lot of live recording of sounds and stuff? So as of recently, yeah, but I'm still trying to learn as I go. I think the main thing I've gotten into is more so MIDI production, um, live instrument in, things like that. But as far as like field recording, I think that's the next thing I'm going to really take to the next level is like, getting a task cam, going out into the city, taking live sounds and just blending them in there and seeing what I can make out of it. That's where I think it would become, not that it's not fun for you already, but definitely it would become mm -hmm. more fun where it would stretch you a whole lot more of like, okay, how can I take these everyday sounds and actually go to work? Because that, not a lot of people understand, like it's not as easy as just uploading a kick drum. Like it's not... Yeah. I I and and you can teach me on this too as well because again I'm not I'm not ever gonna act like I know what I'm talking about. Um, the, it's hardly ever, if ever, 
that you just drop in, for instance, a kick or a snare yeah. and just leave it as is. Like nah. there's there's definitely tweaking. What kind of what kind of tweaking do you end up having to do for sounds that are even if there's just drum kits already that are mm. supposed to be prepared? Like what I mean, you have to give us some background on that. Yeah, just basic like mixing and engineering stuff. Um manipulating compression and simple things like that. Like when you have an eight oh eight or a kick drum. You can't I mean, some people do. I mean, if that's your route and you just slap it in and it's already pre mixed, go for it. But for us, um, I wanna say pros, I guess. We, we really take the time to compress our drums, to make sure that they're EQ'd properly, to make sure that, you know, if I want my snare on my clap to have a little bit of a reverb, that I, I, you know, I make sure that's there properly. I might put a delay on it. I might, you know, slice it up a couple of times. It's all about arrangement and mixing um, in that standpoint. And especially when it goes to field recording stuff, you can never leave that stuff how it, how it came out in a task cam. It, it, it just right. will never come out like that continuing on the the question of uh, producer so you're an artist right as well as a producer yeah. what does that balance look like because um i i know well for instance one of ruslan's track uh w w gosh now i'm blanking out on what the the song is but he was basically talking about how he used to uh save like the dope beats for himself right and so mm -hmm. what is that like for you as as not just balance of time but balance of like uh, making music for yourself uh, in, in terms of just also making it for others? I think because I do this full-time, it's a little different for me. Um, and I've been doing it full-time for a while. So my enjoyment is seeing other people happy just as much as myself creating a great product. So in, in, the, in the stance of, you know, I can make uh, 10 to 15 beats within a matter of two hours or three hours or whatever. And I pick out just what I want, but somebody may not have the same taste as me. So, I mm -hmm. mean, in that aspect, it's just kind of subjective because what I like, somebody else may not like, but I know everything that I make is dope in a sense. That's the, that's that DJ part because I love music so much that the beats that I make, I still love them. I still love to create them. I think they sound right, amazing. Right. But as the artist aspect, I don't think that's for me to rap on or sing on necessarily. I don't think that's for me to make a song out of as to where somebody else may say, you know what, I I want to make a song out of this immediately, yo, bro. Sell me that right now and I got you. Like, yeah, so it, it's a difference. I like the confidence of, like, I just I just make dope beats anyways. Like, it's just, like, everything I do is a banger. Like, And, and the thing is, is that not right. in, a, in a cocky sense, but in a confidence sense. There's a difference, right, between confidence right. and cockiness. Uh, and something that I've learned, uh, especially through the summer, uh, when I was first hopping into uh, some of your IG lives. Guys, if you don't already follow uh, LC on Instagram, um, I know we got some of the links already in there. But make sure you guys are following him. Uh, he goes live uh, pretty often for music stuff. But that he's, uh, but where I first got a chance to get to know you is uh, you were in a, a chat with uh, Q um and some others i i mean now mm -hmm. i know now i know you and mm -hmm. q more than anybody else mm -hmm. but but you guys would be you know talking over the word right and yeah. um really really going in depth with things that i was like man i'm kind of like I was, I was that's what actually drew me more towards you so mm -hmm. to be confident and cocky um you know two totally different things but to have the perspective yeah. of uh being rooted in christ so where especially with the hip-hop culture yeah um do you ever feel yourself kind of struggle not struggle but like kind of wrestle with the thoughts of um going from from that confidence to uh to too cocky or like like how do you how do you keep yourself humble basically how, how i want to say it. like at the same time you know mm -hmm. you're making great music how do you keep yourself yeah. so i mean that's a good question <laughs> so for me there's there's a big there's a very fine line um and you you'll know if you cross the Here's the biggest thing, right? And, and and here's how you answer that question perfectly without kind of even having to really uh, fuss or fight about it. If you have to question whether it's being cocky or if you're being um, braggadocious or anything like that, then stay away from it. I think that's that's kind of how I, I identify your own red flags um, in a sense. But yes, the mm, word you yeah. know the word definitely. The word definitely gives us. Um, sorry, I'm trying to plug this charger. In. Oh, my phone to die. <laughs> you good? You good? The word, the word definitely gives us some, um, some, some, some cues already of what to look for. And I think if you are already in the mindset of um, questioning yourself and saying, "Bro, does this come off too cocky?" Bro, throw it away. 
if it doesn't align mm. with the word of Christ, throw it away. That's just kind of how it. That's just kind of how it how it fits in in that sense. And and if you're an artist and you're going in and you're saying, okay, well, I want to make a track, and this is this is this is a general conversation. I'm not calling anybody out. But if you're an artist, and I just because because you know you know how people do, I just look. Yeah, if you're just, if you're listen, I gotta make that statement first. But if you're an artist, <laughs> and no matter if it's a, a love song or it's a you know a, a, a upbeat song, a hype song, whatever it is, I'm not saying that you have to you know dig to find number in a bio. I'm not saying you have to do that. You know what I mean? But one thing I will say is this: if you pray over your music. Before you even hop on a mic or before you hop into the studio, if you pray over your music and ask God for guidance, then you won't have to worry about if you're pulling. It's not an essay. You're not trying to corroborate with the Bible. Your music should already come stemming from there. You shouldn't have to build your song and then throw in things around there. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, nah, I, I like that you said that. But like, in order to, and I actually, I like, I like going back to when you said. Um, identify your own red flags right yeah. um and that's and that that is powerful right don't get me wrong but of course we have blind spots right we have blind spots uh and, and sometimes i would be willing to say sometimes we develop blind spots and what i mean is yeah. at first at first you knew like yeah i'm kind of tripping right now but like i'll just kind of i'm not at least you start kind of comparing yourself to somebody else well at least i'm not as bad as that person it's like, like mm-hmm. right you start doing that but then it goes from like at least hey you are at least identifying it at least you were aware of it to almost lying to yourself to the point where like now you're like oh i had no idea yeah. well it's like no nah, you did you but you kept ignoring it if you it. can't call that out if you if you can't call that out like if you can't identify first and foremost like that and, and that's that's part of repentance too when when we when we talk about sin if you can't identify what's wrong then there's something wrong you know what i mean like yeah. you have to identify that there's something there but then it also goes into, and again, how I got a chance to meet you, um, healthy community, right? You, you got to yeah. have that community, that accountability. What would you say to somebody who um, is struggling to build that kind of community? Um, how, how could they, until they develop that? Because obviously there's so many nuances, there's so many variables as to why somebody may be struggling um, for it. Um, you know, they could have just moved. They could have been church hurt. They could have been... Mm. Um, you know, it, it, it could have been just a number of different things, but right. they're still wanting to track the, the correct direction. How, how, what kind of like, what kind of things did you have to do for yourself to identify certain red flags that maybe someone else didn't call out, but you knew in your heart, like, okay, I got to deal mm. with this. Here's the like nail on the head. And I'm not even trying to like do the whole, let me, let me preach and hit the nail on the side. Nah, but it's, it's the factor of, if you can't submit under somebody else, then there's something wrong. There's always somebody in your life that has been through what you're already going through right now. And you should be able to identify um, with them via testimony. Because a perfect example, I'm glad you brought Q up. Shout out Q. Q is a person that me and him share a lot in the same uh, sense of testimony. And he's the person that, you know, whenever I need to talk to somebody, I go to him and talk to and if you can't identify, you know, your struggles and realize that there's other people, there's other people out here that go through the same thing that you do every day and that have been through it already. Yeah. Find yourself, not, it doesn't have to be a pastor, but find somebody that's already rooted that you can connect to and God will open up all the other doors. Because not saying you have to bust wide open into a brand new church, you don't got to bust wide open into a brand new youth group. Find one person that you can get rooted with or or something because sometimes there's apps out here that help people right. just being real look the you version bible app helps a lot of people just being real and just find that one thing that roots you back in because that's the, that's the biggest thing is the connection once you disconnect that's when the enemy tries to attack you most so always make sure you're connected and covered Woo! yes sir <laughs> Yes, sir. Absolutely. And and um, and I love that you even just brought up apps. Right. So like I was talking about a little bit earlier, for those of you guys who tuned in a little bit, um, who, who just tuned in, you know, we have an app called Oxen Team Network. Uh, and in there uh, we read through the scriptures um, uh, throughout the year 
together and uh, we're encouraging one another. That's where the prayer team is switching. There's a lot of different things going on. So when you were talking about submitting to authority, so today, uh, the, the readings for today was uh, uh, First Peter chapters 1 through 5, right? The whole, whole all First Peter. And in there, I mean, I just, I mean, literally just as a reflection of what, uh, what I was reading earlier today uh, and commenting on in our uh, Oxygen Team Network app, was that was the the fact that a lot of people not only have an issue with submitting to authority but understanding how to do it with uh humility and how how to still be mm-hmm. humble uh with that and um and that's it's just so i'm i'm just saying that because for you to to, to say that and the fact that you know we're reading that together already on our app i was like mm-hmm. oh man that's perfect and and that is probably one of the things that, um, again there's many different things but that's definitely one of the things that really will stunt a person's growth is their unwillingness yeah. to submit to any authority um because you know i know better like basically you know what i mean yeah yeah and that's and that's kind of like and i'm gonna be real i'm gonna just i'm gonna just say this and this comes from a, a testimonial standpoint don't be so big chested and big headed that God got to take you back to ground zero for you to realize how, how far off you've gotten off course. Mm, Don't let him have to snatch everything from you for you to realize that you were never in the right place in the first place, that you don't know everything. Cause trust me, I didn't try to box with God many a times. I've lost every time. (laughs) (laughs) Oh man, that's good. That's good. Hey, what up everybody in the chat? We got nap tribe. We got official D rock. Uh, we also have, uh, Ann in the, from the Philippines. What's up girl. Um, thank you guys for so much being here. Uh, if you guys are just here, my name is DJ integrity. This is mixed Mondays hosted and powered by oxen brand music and the guest for this evening dj lc so make sure you guys stick around we've got some more uh things and then all, again he's in the chat as well so if you guys want to uh comment uh anything asking any kind of questions or whatever um you know feel free to in the chat that's why that's why he's here so let's go ahead and keep going uh and talking about being able to have a, a radar in our hearts and our life we're going to go with the number eight video uh with sticks and zaymar called radar let's go um, but man, actually, you know what? It's kind of cool. Um, it, it's a good segue to this to this next question that I wanted to ask you. Um, so you got Lecrae, and then you got One K Few, right? You got an, a, a mm-hmm. more of what we would we refer to as an OG now, um, mm-hmm. which he still got a couple more years before it's like true, true OG. But for the most part, he, he's mm-hmm. an OG. Um, mm-hmm. And then you got uh, a younger cat, One K Few. But then there's a bunch of cats like you who are coming on the scene, mm-hmm. you know, who are even more new, right? That I, I would say. Um, right. One question that I uh, that I always like to try to ask anybody who is who is newer to the scene, right? I mean, I know you've been doing right. it for years and and different, that, but newer to the scene is what do you feel like the younger generation, right? I, w- I would mm-hmm. say you, the you know the, the newer cats coming up. What do you guys feel like um, that you have that some of the OGs? Um, are lacking not obviously in a bad negative mm. sense but no that's um, a good yeah that's good no you, you asked the right person this question for real okay um, all right go ahead take it away bro nah because we have a whole community um and we talk about this called next gen n-x-t-g-e-n next gen and um really it's it's not that um anything is lacking i think that the younger generation are interpreting um things wrong and incorrectly you see The way humans like to work is we take things and we twist truth into the point where it sits right with us. And I think now the next gen, the the true believers, I think, um, which is a lot of the cats that, you know, I'll just shout out a couple of names, Q, J. Violet, Nix, Kello, a couple of the homies. I mean, like, I, I just know that are on track to carry the torch correctly, if you get what I'm saying. Um, because there's going to come a, a period of time, which I believe we're in now, where there's a gap in CHH, where it's turned into, um, where we're we're looking like mainstream. We're trying mm. to be, we're trying to be like mainstream and secular, when it, it it shouldn't be like that. Um, and I and, and 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 it's because we like to twist things and say, oh, this is okay, this is this, this is that. Now hear what I'm saying and not what I'm not saying. Am I saying that? there are artists out here that are bad and what they're doing is terrible and that they're not Christians. No, that's not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is that we need to stop trying to blend culture with Christianity because the problem is that you got, we obviously don't know how to blend the two. 
we need to get the Christianity part down first, then represent culture. Okay. Um, because, I mean, to be relatable, yes, you have to have a cultural aspect. You have to be able to, um, you know, identify with what's going on. You have to be able to be uh, current. You have to be able to be those things. But I think in the process, just like the question you asked me earlier, is we lose the mindset of what am I doing this for? And that's that's really where it goes. Yeah. So I guess because I hear this often, um, I hear this often, that, that phrasing of, you know, um, a lot of cats are trying to be more like what the world is right now or, you know, blending those lines or whatever without <clears throat> necessarily name dropping or anything. What are some examples? Because for me, I mean, and, and it's not that I don't a hundred percent see it because mm-hmm. I know mm-hmm. I know it's it's there, mm-hmm. but I think it's mm-hmm. because my personality is like uh, if you're not really doing something with your life, um, you're not really close to me. Like I, I don't have mm-hmm. a lot of interaction with you. Um, I'm I'm very particular about uh, the people that I stay in constant conversation with. Like it, it, we all got issues, but if I can tell that you're not trying to work through your issues or mm-hmm. like there's always like. You keep coming back to it because you don't want to like grow, like you know what I mean. So, so when it comes to that conversation of like, uh, you know, people are, are are blending the culture, you know, with Christianity and stuff like that. I, again, I don't doubt that it's happening, but the, all the people that I'm keeping track of are the ones who aren't doing that, or at least are the ones that are right. maneuvering in such a way that I'm like, but mm-hmm. I still clearly can see your light. So, what what is well, again, without so name dropping? I'll give, yeah, no, what's an example? Fact, I, what I'll do is I'll give a good representation of what it should look like. Um, and cause, cause, cause instead of rather not name dropping, I'd rather call out the good things that I've, I've seen. So perfect example, um, Caleb Gordon, uh, Caleb Gordon has now transformed the entire social media world as we know it. Um, and not even just Christians, but he is literally spitting straight volumes of the word and nobody. And, and the problem is, it's not a problem, but the thing is that everybody else is like, yo, this track is so hot. Bro, he's saving y'all in the process. Like, mm, that's what the yeah. big thing is. And I think um, instead of, like I said, instead of name dropping, we should focus to be more like that example. Um, I'm not saying everybody has to be Caleb style. No, be creative. Find your own lane. Find your own pocket. But what your goal is, is to do what that man is doing, which is, Let's go out here and save souls before we're trying to make stream income, before we're trying to make ourselves known, before we're trying to go on a billboard, before we're trying to do a show, and this, that, and the third. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, that's that's a good point. I'm uh, I'm reading Cole's uh, comment right now. It said uh, He said it's, it's Christian hip-hop. That's what CHH is, and mm-hmm. uh, we have seen it shift um, hip-hop that is Christian. Uh, oh, that same that, – okay, that conversation. And we can have that – the uh, – that we can have that in secular uh still we need to get back to christ centric music with CHH right. um which again and and I I 100% agree you know with that and maybe it's a good thing that I don't necessarily know who's not really doing that um because to me like for instance right Lecrae is mm-hmm. never he's for some people he's just never going to do the right thing or say the right thing right mm-hmm. um and so the same people who are like man you know, I, I want the old Lecrae, you know, to, to go back to talk about Jesus. And but I'm like, you know, but I listen to the music. And I'm like, I don't I didn't hear it completely go away. Like, I don't I, I didn't hear it shift. Like, you know what I mean? And and some of it, too, is the maturity, um, you know, in your walk with Christ. Right. Like uh, the, the more mature you are, the more you can understand the big mm-hmm. picture when you're hearing stuff from artists. Because as, as an artist. Yeah. That's, yep. Yeah. That's and, 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 and as an artist, like there's only so much you can communicate per track you know per album uh um, here's the biggest thing too but but here's what i've noticed is that people get offended very easily and it and it makes amen. it harder on it makes it harder on artists i think and, and here's the here's the issue and i and i want to say this to everybody in the chat support your artist don't make their job harder because you we say that we want them to spit truth but then when it's spit we kind of say, oh, you went too far and you crossed the line and da 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 Listen, I'm going to be real. If it correlates to the Bible, leave, that, leave it alone because you don't want to have a situation where you're trying to go against Scripture and da-da-da. That's the problem. We need to support our artists, show love and patience, 
not tear them down is what I'm saying. And you have artists out here that have been doing this for years. I mean, the OGs, um, perfect example, Bizzle, um, his yeah. brand new album. I mean, it was probably the most transparent thing you can get from a CHH album. Now, am I saying like, you know, I listen to Bizzle music all the time. No, I'm not saying that. I'm definitely a fan of Bizzle. I love the man's character because when I heard a couple tracks off the album, maybe not everybody it correlates um, to like, oh, bro, you went too aggressive or you used this word or this, 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 this and the third. Man, yo, I'm be real. He was raw. <laughs> he, ga- he, he gave y'all what he probably deals with in the prayer closet that he tells his wife that he don't tell nobody else. And you got to realize that he's taking a step that half of us wouldn't take if we were paid to do it. You know what I mean? So, mm. and that's just out of faith. So, I think we got to kind of ease back on the whole. Let's just, oh, let's just tell them that they're not doing this right. And da, 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 da. that's why I said no. I said we just need to get ourselves right, get the Christian side right. So that way, when it comes to the cultural time and try to try to get these young people and get everybody else in the world, try to bring them to Christ. We already are rooted first. That way you don't have issues later down the line. Nah, that's good, man. That's good. Uh, Official D-Rock just said, we as Christians are quick to pick out flaws rather than show love and redirect you already, the correct manner. You already know. That's my boy. He listen, We talk about it all the time. Yeah, it, and uh, it also kind of goes back to uh, something that I'm, uh, you know, I, I keep up with Ruslan a lot and something that he always, uh, he often says, I would rather be known for what I'm for than what I'm against. And right. I feel like uh, Christians, and not just Christians, but because we're talking about that specifically, Christians tend to be known more about what they're against than what they're for. Uh, mm-hmm. And so their platform, rather it's musically or, or maybe just the fans that they draw, um, turn into something where it, it wasn't meant to be. Like it, it, yeah. it's, you know, in the effort of trying to point out some things, it turned into this is what we're all against and now you can't find common ground you can't find anything you almost lose the fact that you're speaking to another image bearer uh and that just is a slippery slope altogether yeah it's it's not one-way music we have to remember that everything we do has to be a mirror image of christ has to be a reflection it's not one-way image they're not trying to look at you it needs to be a reflection of him that's the biggest thing Hey, I'm loving this conversation. We're going to keep going. Uh, I see uh, I see Cole. I see you guys all lighting up in the chat. We're going to get caught up in the chat as well. So let's go ahead and go into uh, number six with Andy Minio and Joseph Solomon, Not Gonna Do. Amen. Amen. Um, <clears throat> oh, I see you were messing around with the filters. Yes. Yes. This is what happens. <laughs> this is what happens uh with these uh with these filters um so we are here um with our special guest dj lc um producer Mm -hmm. artist dj uh, a little bit of anything and everything preacher uh we'll we'll toss in as (laughs) as well um just man of god right we'll just go ahead and toss it all up in man of god but um so let's talk about your song uh we're gonna we're about to play it's called move um give us uh give us some some insight as to what the song is about and just kind of how it came about as well well, um, how it came about is, uh, you know, LC just makes music in the time that he makes music. I mean, there really is no kind of, uh, of if and or why um, of how it got made, but it just got made. Um, but really, um, the whole thing was to kind of give everybody a uh, upbeat song that was kind of something different. I mean, the song is called Move. Um, strictly because I want people to move out of their comfort zone. I'm tired of um, us being stagnant. I'm tired of us sitting around and waiting for praise to come. We just need to get our praise back and move. You know what I mean? Get up and move. Um, and the song is, is, is definitely something that uh, when I sent it to my oh snap, I'm over here, got my phone dying. Sorry. Uh, it's some, definitely something that <laughs> when I said, <laughs> I got my phone dying, I'm like when I said this to my bro, Kello, uh, he was like, yo, this is probably my favorite song I've ever heard from you. And uh, he hopped on there, and I think it's just a good way to kind of, you know, break the ice and get loose. Um, man, okay, so move. So uh, the so this this video, so let, let's, let's explain so that the audience kind of knows. 
So this video, I saw um, it's a it's a, a bunch of clips of a bunch of dancers together. Are are yes. any of these dancers really affiliated with the song, or were they just kind of no. clips that you kind of put together <laughs> as a visual? I yeah, I edited this. I edited this completely for a lyric video, just kind of something to give a representation of really the way I portray the song. I really feel like, um, and honestly, you know, I know some of the dancers that are in the video, but honestly, I think that. Um, this is a perfect representation of what I feel the song gives off, the vibe that the song gives off. So, if any dancers out there, you know, what I mean, hit me. All right, cool. Yeah, I was gonna say because I saw, I saw some dance clips and I was like, wait a minute, that audio is not is not what they were dancing. Because no, 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 I've no, seen no. some of those videos. So, shh, shh. <laughs> y'all know, y'all know what it is. We do a lot of behind the scenes stuff. You guys get to know some stuff that maybe other people don't. <laughs> that's how that's how we do here on Twitch. It's illegal. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we're going <laughs> we're going to keep it moving and uh yo, make sure you guys light up the chat, let uh DJ LC know uh what you think of his song. So let's go ahead and go into this song featuring Kello called Move. Yo, that was it. That was it right there. The homie DJ LC with the song Check called out. Move. Definitely definitely a song that uh that does that does want you to move, man. Uh and did you because of the video putting it together like that, did you kind of do you ever make songs um, with intentions of like, okay, this is something I want dancers on, this is something I want, mm -hmm. you know, certain things on or whatever? So mm -hmm. how 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 do you go about that process then when you go to create for something like that? I mean, when I kind of when I kind of hear the beat to it, I kind of already know where I want it to go, um, and then kind of like I'm being real, I let the Holy Spirit lead me, dog, like. Like that hook comes first. Like I'm just over there humming. Like uh, left, right, left, right. Pick up your soul. Everybody want to get it right with the law. Like when I think about stuff like that, I'm like, bro, this could be a classic. Like DJs could spin this. And like as a DJ, I think of DJ mindset. Like what would be hot for me to spin? And I know this is like a, a crowd control type of banger. So like you know, I want this song to be like. When when DJ Integrity or uh, DJ I Rock Jesus or you know anybody severe comes up, hey, shout says, out I Rock, yeah, shout out to everybody. But for real, when y'all when y'all are at y'all events, I want y'all to be able to just throw that on and be like, dog, like this is the banger. Everybody comes to the middle of the floor and we just go have fun with this. I want be able to want people to be able to have you know good fun with this. I feel like there's a lot of classics out there where everybody you turn oh this is my jam, this is my da -da 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 -da. that's what yeah. I want this song to be you know yeah, yeah, yeah and shout out to you because uh, shout out to any artist actually who creates uh, a song uh, with the intentions of a DJ can play this um, you yeah. know, I, I think my favorite, so, and again from you also being a DJ, my, my favorite is when an artist either A leaves like four to eight bars at the beginning of a song mm -hmm. or somewhere in some kind of breakdown so that way i can make a dj edit because um then i can blend that music in better right i can mix it in a whole lot better uh because of that um but again for a song like that you know with the claps right especially the claps now because right. <laughs> uh, i'm transparent right because because i'm real yeah. here um I have definitely many a times dropped songs because I'll, I'll, you know, it doesn't matter if I'm, I'm spinning mm -hmm. a specifically Christian event only or whatever the case may be, but I'll be spinning and, uh, you know, it's got the certain BPM mm -hmm. and it goes mm -hmm. <laughs> clap, clap, clap. Mm -hmm. And all I do is I just get on the mic and I go, hey, listen, um, just letting you know this song is lifting up Jesus, but y'all do your thing. <laughs> so I'm just like, I don't know what else all to right. do. You know what I mean? So that's, you know that's what, what I, like, when I heard that you song, that's what do? I was thinking. This is what I, what is this what I say? I call it save people in secret. That's what you do. <laughs> cause cause they'll go back and they'll be like, Yo, what was that song you played? And then after the party they go listen to it like, Dog, I was twerking to this, yo, I need to chill. <laughs> but man, okay, so uh so a question a question that I had, um Oh, my wife forgot that I stream right now. Sorry, I just got a random call. Okay. Um uh one of the questions I want to make sure that I read this right, correct, uh, correct as well that I wanted to ask. So, um, you know, as a as a Christian um, artist, you know, I, mm -hmm. I feel like you would identify yourself as a, I am a Christian artist. Absolutely, hundred percent. Okay, so um, as as a Christian artist, what is something that you have uh, that you've had to walk through that's probably like the most difficult um, in your artistry? You know, rather it's uh, the the content, maybe the the people that you want 
to receive you, that don't receive you, maybe the avenue? Like what, what is something with your Christian artistry uh, that you've had to walk through that's kind of been difficult? And how have you overcome that or how have you come out of that? People trying to downplay my music. I think that's one of the biggest things that um, mm. I've had to kind of walk through, whether it be my age or whether... See, see, the one thing I've always had people downplay me for is people don't believe that, you know, I engineer and I mix and I produce and I, and I do my all, all my own stuff. And then what happens is I get to the point where it's out and then it gets downplayed and it's like, yeah, you're good. It was all right. You know what I mean? I get that. Uh, but you're not Lecrae, but you're not this, but you're not that. And you know, I'm like, I'm not trying to be any of these guys. Um, yeah. And I the think comparison. The I, yeah, I think the way I get through, I mean, like, I've even had, like, shout out to my homie Cannon. Like, my my brother Cannon always tells me, oh, bro, you like, you like a little KB. You like a little Lecrae. I'm like, bro, chill. I'm like, chill. <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it's, it's good to feel that way. But at the same time, my goal is not to become them. My goal is to carry the torch that they leave on. My goal is to um, become another role or become another um, person that, that that becomes a model image. I don't call them icons, but a model image of what um, mm. a CHH artist should look like. And, and you know, integrity, you know this, but, like, I, I consistently work behind the scenes. And I think that's one of the things in the Quickly, the other thing would be, um, you know, investment stuff. When I first start, like, I've been doing music for a while, but the artist thing is a totally, totally different game from being a DJ and not knowing what mix and mastering was over, like, two years ago and stuff like that. Man, I had to do everything on my own. So it's kind of, that, that, that's been a process and all that. Just the, the going back to the comparison thing, um, mm-hmm. you know, uh, I think how do you how do you take that? How do you take that when somebody compares you? Is it, is it do you kind of take it in a way of like, yo, I kind of want you to see me as me, or do you kind of take that as a compliment? Like, okay, cool, like no, that's kind of the I direction I want to go. I, yeah, I definitely take it as a compliment because like my music's mad versatile. One track I could sound like KB, one I might sound like Billy, I might sound like this, I might sound like that, but I know I have my own style. You know what I mean? I I am me. There is no other other LC. You know what I mean? I have my own unique flow, but I take it as a compliment because the people I look up to, um, the people I'm cool with, some people like people, pe- the reason why I'm cool with Cannon, people always talk about, yo, bro, you like a mini Cannon. Cannon is one of my mentors. We talk all the time. You know what I mean? So, um, are you talking to RMG's Cannon? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's what's up. Yeah. So, I mean, like, it's, 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 it's good. But you you have to be humble enough to receive it in a way that's not haughty. You can't receive it and be like, oh, people saying I'm like Canon. I'm Canon now. I'm better than you. I'm better than you. You can't you can't rock like that, bro. And uh you, you take it with a grain of salt. Um you take the compliment, but you don't let it you don't let it make you big headed. That's the, just the biggest thing. I'll never want to get to the point where it's like, bro, you sound like such and such on this track. Okay, great. Tag them in my song so we can keep it moving. <laughs> uh, Cole, uh, <laughs> your comment, bro. Uh, oh, sorry. my Lord. I, I, at first, I thought he was saying something serious, and I'm like, oh, never mind. He just, <laughs> he just wow. Uh, that's funny. Um, yes, all, all white people will always be compared to NF and Eminem for the rest of their <laughs> life. <what's, laughs> what kind of features, LC, are you looking? Because I know you're busy. I know you're always lining stuff up i know and i'm always hearing you talk um actually before i ask this question before before we get into that question before we get into that question just because it it is it is something that i'm like kind of pet peevish about if i could just be real about Mm -hmm. when artists and i I, more so young bucks i hear a lot but when artists get hype about their music i'm i'm glad that everybody's hype about their music Mm-hmm. But what are your thoughts when everyone is saying, yo, this is going to be crazy. Yo, they're not ready for this. Like, like, cause you, you understand what I'm saying? Like, like I, it, it is definitely something that is said so much. And as, and, and I'm a natural born hater. All right. Let me just, I'm, I have not actually said that to you. I'm a natural born hater. So when people are like, yo, this is going to be crazy. I'm like, okay, now I'm really, you might as well have just dropped it. Cause now I don't know. <laughs> like now, now I'm second guessing life right now. Um, 
but anyways, so what are your thoughts just on that when people are excited about their music, but it all sounds the same? And, and just my opinion, when I'm hearing the comments of it's going to be crazy or my other favorite one is y'all not ready for this. And I'm not calling you out anybody or anybody specifically because we I've I've done it even you with, forgot, with you forgot uh, the other one. We about what? to make it on the hood with this one. <laughs> 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 okay. Oh, uh, yo, but it's but it's but it's true. It's true. So so, what do you, what um, are your thoughts to that? Do you do you are you like man? Yeah, people kind of hype it up too much, or like so, I don't know. Like so, here's my thing. <laughs> <laughs> Integrity put me in a bad spot. Um, here's here's my thing. If you think that this is gonna be your best single ever, every single you drop, you might want to take a look at your overall discography. Because, I mean, yeah, your your next song should always be better than your last. But I kind of have an issue when it's like. I mean, it's hard because I do it. <laughs> I mean, I drop a song and I'm like, bro, I think there's gonna be but I just show I just show snippets. If you think it's gonna be that good, go showcase it. Like give people the energy. Don't tease people. Don't say, bro, this is gonna be the next banger. Show them. Just just put it out there. That's the that's that's the biggest thing. I feel like actions are a lot of the words. Just put it out there. Don't talk about it, be about it, right? Be that's about it. Thanks. Yeah, and I th- I think it's just more deflating and, and uh when it's just like, yo, this going this next one gonna be crazy and it's just like, Okay, listen, homie, you have said that for the last two or three and yes, they sounded nice, but you sounded just like everyone else. So I kinda forgot the song, but I bought it because I support you. I just don't I don't rock with it as hard as you thought it was. No. I think that's the biggest thing though, but we need more people to be honest about it because here's the problem. If you I don't want to be that guy, but don't don't just support an artist. <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> don't just support an artist just to say everything that they make is good. Support an artist by telling them the truth. Being honest. Because artist feedback is the only way we get better. Yeah. And I think the feedback itself, though, kind of back to what we were talking about, like with corrections, you know, when, when people want to correct Christians and this, that, mm-hmm. and the other. How would somebody on the outside, like a fan, if I'm on the outside, I'm not in your inner circle, mm-hmm. you're probably not going to receive almost anything I say. So so is there something that I could do as a fan? Like, is like does it matter or do I just got to hope that they have somebody real in their camp? Like, you no, know what I mean? It, it, it matters because here's the thing. It's not up to the fan. It's not up to the viewer because it should really be. It's, that's the character of your artist and work right there. Because, and I'm not saying that we always get to every comment or every DM or anything like that. But if we're taking that and responding and barking back at you versus internalizing that and just putting the work, like I said, don't be it, don't talk about it, be about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you shouldn't even have to respond to those comments because, number one, if the comment makes you feel like you're not doing enough, then there's either two things going on. Either number one, you're not being transparent in your music. Because first, that's that's number one. Because first of all, people align with re- relatability and trans- transparency more than anything. Why do you think people mm. love NF so much? They don't like him because just because so, the song is hot. NF is real. He's raw. He is like serious. That that it just being real. Like when he talks about mental health and therapy, that's some, that's something very serious that people struggle with now. Um, right. And then number two, it could be because you're not putting out um, the quality of music that you want to. And I think and, and to all my artists that don't think that you don't think that your music is quality yet, take a step back, stop putting out so much quantity and focus on your quality. Stop dropping albums, especially when you don't have the, the fan base to be dropping albums like that. You know what I mean? Or don't push out, out. bro. That's huge. Don't be. It is. Out. It is. Don't be. Don't be pushing out four or five albums in two years, and you don't even have the base number one, nor the quality number two. Yeah, I, I think that's great that you even said that. It's, it's the fan base. Like, uh, you you can be you can be overzealous, uh, yeah. and then and then not only. 
financially put yourself in a bind as an artist, right? You start investing so much into it, but then um, mentally, right? Mentally, emotionally, right. you start putting yourself in a bind because uh, you go into that hustler mentality and you go so hard and then you forget to cover those those foundations um, and then you get burnt out. And maybe maybe it is something that you're supposed to do, but you just try to get in front of God, you know, or whatever the case may be. What is a, what's a, a good tip? I know I'm, I'm now I'm going further away from the other question, but what's a good tip for an artist um, to build fan base in 2021 going 2022. Um, oh, because, I love this question. Because uh, events are not as easy right now, um, you know, for a lot of different reasons or whatever. So what what is something that an artist can do now to try to build? The same that? way I got on this show, relationship. Build relationships with people via social media, via email, via connection of another person. Build the relationship. Stop trying to sell your mixtape and sell your music and build relationships with people. That is so, it's such a big thing. I can honestly say all my monthly listeners are my monthly listeners. Like, I know these people. These are people that DM me. These are people that text me. These are people that call me. These are people, and, and bro, listen, it's so strange to say, um, like, you know, everybody's like, LC, you're underrated. Da, 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 da. I don't care if I have 300, 200, 400 monthly listeners or 5,000 listeners. My biggest thing is I want to be able to say, yo, integrity, what you doing, bro? Can I pray for you? Can I do this? Can I do that? Mm. I want to make sure that my brother is taken care of before I'm over here sending him 500 million songs. You know what I mean? <laughs> this is, I, I'm being, re- yo, I'm a DJ, dog. I, I'm, oh, I feel I'm it. Covered, Trust me, I, I feel covered, it. I cover every area of music. You know how many people just send me music to send me music in DMs? I don't look... Listen. Yeah. Sorry, I'm going to say this live on Twitch. If you've ever sent me music without context and we don't have a relationship, I probably never looked at it. I'm just, no, that's facts. Well, and, the, and uh, man, I'm glad that you made that mention. So, I don't mind being sent stuff, right? I just would like the relationship to continue from there. Like, send it that, and then... Thank you. I don't mind that, but say, you know what I mean... Like, if I send integrity my stuff, like, first of all, uh, <laughs> this man, I shout him out, tag him and things. First of all, there's so many things that you can do to support other people while trying right. to support, while trying to gain support. Right, right. And that's a relationship. Like, like when you do a partnership, you guys come together, bring something to the table. Don't just expect to put your put your stuff on the table and not bring something to the table as well. Don't have your hands out willing to receive gifts and not being willing to give anything. Hey, well, I know the the, the show's been running long. I appreciate you, uh, and and uh, you know, I just want to I want to wrap up um, with the uh, with 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 the question that I was originally going to ask. Um, hey, shout out Corazon for the uh, for the bits. Uh, um, as always, guys, if you ever want to support um, your subs and bits, uh, go directly back into the channel and to be able to uh, get artists such as DJLC onto the show. So um, so if you love the content and you guys enjoy this, make sure that you guys are sharing it with other people so that they know uh, and make sure you talk it up because obviously, just like anything else, uh, if we want people to love Jesus, but we're not excited enough to talk about him, um, then we can't wonder why there aren't more people christian things more things that are openly about it so if you're enjoying the content um and you uh you want to see more stuff like this then make sure you support uh financially of course prayer uh, but then yeah getting the word out so but um elsie when it comes to um the uh uh features again you're constantly working are there any features as of right now that you don't have actually set in place uh that you're looking forward to to doing um are we allowed to know any of that stuff? Because I know kind of how you are about <laughs> about some of that stuff. So, uh, if there's nothing specifically that you're allowed to I say, I will say this. <laughs> I will say this in 2022. I will be doing the features with a lot of artists that are already pretty much known in the CHH realm. Um, mm-hmm. I already said, shout out my bro Zay Hill. We've been working a lot, um, doing some stuff in the background. Also, uh, shout out to homie Cannon. But uh, I will say, as far as features go, um, just be be ready, because because it's it's 2022. I was just telling my lady this. Listen, clean slate. Elsie's coming in clean slate, and I'm uh, listen. We coming in for Christ. I'm not I'm not about to sit back no more and be like, oh, you know what I mean? Check out my new single. 
here it is. Seeing your face it's on the chart, going somewhere with this. Integrity's about to spin this. You already know what time it is. We got this in the bag. So this, this, this is where I'm at. Hey, no, nah, I love it. I love it. I was waiting for you to say it's crazy and y'all not ready for it. <laughs> it's, 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 look, look. I can't say y'all not ready for it because you should be expecting it at this point. I stay ready. I, I get. Yeah, I stay I'm ready. Say, I, I had my year of uh, the integrity solid. It was this year. We already had the LC year of y'all not ready for this. Y'all not ready for that. This is just <laughs> be ready for it because it's coming and you don't have a you don't have a choice. <laughs> That's what's up. That's what's up. Well, uh, are there uh, are there any kind of final thoughts or anything that you uh, want to share with the audience and on the playback uh, for any anybody? Um, first of all, I want to give a big shout out to my lady. I want to give a big shout out to my son. Um, man, listen. First of all, uh, just thank all my entire fan base uh, for just coming in and and and. Well, I want to say I keep saying fan base, but my family. Um, shout out to everybody in the chat that is that is here, um, supporting me, supporting um, just the the industry itself, and um, I pray that CHH continues to move in the the right direction and um, continue to carry the torch, man. Shout out to all my all my homies in the CHH realm. You already know how we do. Carry the torch, man. Uh, again, it was an honor to have you on the show. I love the dialogue. I know this won't be the last time we have you on the show because it sounds like there's a there's a lot of stuff that uh, you like to talk about, man, and I and I want to hear more about it for <laughs> sure, bro. So, so let's uh we'll we'll stay connected. Um, again, That's if you it. guys haven't already followed him, make sure you guys follow him. All the links have already been in there. Shout out to my mods uh, for holding that down, and uh, yeah, make sure you guys not only support him. Uh, by saying, hey, I like his music, but actually go buy it. You guys know what it is. Streaming numbers and all that, it's important to get booked and all that. But uh, financially, um, you know, especially as a family man, you want to take care of the homie, uh, buy that stuff, right? Buy it, pre-save it, uh, all that kind of stuff. And that uh, you guys know how that moves the needle uh, really well. So, again, shout out DJLC. Thank you so much for being here, bro. And uh, we'll, we'll definitely catch you next time, bro. Appreciate you. Yo, thank you so much for sticking around to the end. Hopefully you found any of this content useful. And if you did, make sure you like and subscribe. And of course, hit that notification bell so you can be notified for the next time that we upload anything. However, make sure that you're also following us on all of our social media platforms. And of course, we want to see you guys live in the chat in our Twitch. So make sure that you guys are following us there as well. Love you guys. Peace.